Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Lynette with Quality Sewing and Vacuum here for your weekly How Do I? where you get tips, tricks, and hopefully a lot of inspiration. So today we're going to do How Do I Trim Towels? So what I have here is some store-bought towels. So Kimberbell is a great place to get those. They have all different colors. And I just added some fabric and a little bit of ribbon makes a great way to spruce up your decor or it's an excellent gift. Another thing that you can do if you want to just go above and beyond is you can add ruffles, you can add toppers. So just starting with a base blank towel gives you so many options. All right, so to get started, like I said, I have my blank towel. And first thing I'm going to do is lay it so that the wrong side of the towel is up. I've already prepped so you didn't have to watch me cut and do all that stuff. A 10 inch piece of fabric that I have folded in half and pressed wrong sides together. I am going to match that to the bottom of my towel and put just a couple pins in there so it doesn't shift on me while I'm stitching. All right. Now, on your machine, all you need for this is going to be a straight stitch. I like to stitch it right side with my fabric on the bottom, and that way I can follow the pre-stitched in my towel. It just gives me a really nice um, seam allowance. So I'm going to put my foot down, and let's go ahead and just zip through this guy. Of course, stopping when I get to my pins and line, readjusting and lining up if needed. Move that guy and line him back up. All right. So once we've done that, if you're lucky enough to have a machine that has automatic scissors, we're going to hit that button and take our towel out. Now, we'll go over to the iron, and I have the quilters cut and pressed by June Taylor. And the Nifty Notion Mini Iron, which gets nice and hot. And I'm going to do just a quick... Fold in that seam, turn it right side up, and fold that over. Okay, so we'll get it all lined up. And again, just press in your folds. That will give you a much crisper, nicer looking bottom. And I picked a wide towel. It doesn't quite fit the way I'm sitting. And I typically find on towels, because they have a good weight, you don't need to overpin, just a couple, so that you can adjust as you go is typically enough. All right, so there I have my bottom band, and now we'll go back to our machine, and we're going to stitch our top. So when I stitch my top, there are, of course, all different ways to determine how big of a top stitch you would like. So I like to leave my needle center and follow on the inside of my toe. That to me, feels like a good spacing. 
So I'm just going to follow right along on the inside of that toe. Keeping everybody right there. And last pin. And there we go. All right. Now, here comes the fun part, adding some ribbon. So when I look for my ribbons and things like that, I like to look at whatever my fabric is to start with. Looking at this, the, the color that pops out the most to me is the um, pomegranates and the tomatoes. And so I found a pink ribbon that really kind of helps that pop and really pulls out that color. And I think it looks quite nice. Now, if you're more of an orange person, an orange ribbon or whatever, there are no rules. What we are going to use is, let me grab it. The Clover Super Size 5-in-1 Sliding Gauge. So what I really like about this is as I push, I can decide how far I would like it. And then it actually locks in place. So when I am pinning and shifting and doing all of my things, it's not going to change my measurement. So I'm going to line up the inside of the bottom, and then I'm going to line up my ribbon to the top. So right there. We can add a little pin. Come down to the other end and again, line up the same spots. Making sure my ribbon is nice and flat. And just so we don't have any wobbles in the middle, we'll do it one more time in the middle and pin it. All right, from here, I like to switch out my foot whenever I'm doing ribbons. So the, ri the foot I prefer is the stitch in the ditch foot. And what's really nice about it is you can see it has a little bit of a flange or a guide, which is actually the center where the needle position is gonna be. So we'll pop off this foot, pop on this one. Okay, so from here, I will move my needle over just a little bit. So that way, oh, I pinned backwards, look at that. All right, so that way, as I am stitching, I can run that flange right up against my ribbon. Oh, look at that. I moved it too far. Well, that's not a great place to start, is it? Okay, so I didn't have extra needles, so that is fun for me. So we're not gonna sew on the ribbon, but I'll show you some things that it looks like. When you use that gauge, if you look up here, I instead of a ribbon, I used another piece of fabric and I did it the same way I did the bottom. I folded it, folded it up, top stitched it. Some other fun things you can do is add, I don't know if Mike can see that real well, but let's pull this one up here a little closer. So this one, instead of going straight across, I decided to do um, some angles. And so I just used a 45 and measured about two inches and added some fun decorative stitches. So that one has a topper on it. The, this one is a lot more basic, so you can add some fun trims and baubles and fringe, things like that. But the trims I, if you're not quite sure where to start, trims that I find are really fun to play with are the Kimberbell. They have tons of different kinds. 
So they have some different seasonal ones. This one I haven't gotten a chance to play with yet, but I'm thinking it's going to be fun. Um, I want to layer it so it gives me kind of a flower look. So that might be kind of kind of interesting. Um, that, let's see. I'm trying to think, did I show you all my fun things? I think I did. So this one honestly is my favorite. So thank you for joining me. I'm Lynette with Quality Sewing and Vacuum on how do I trim a towel. To find more inspiration, tips, and tricks, join us at qualitysewing.com. Thank you.